فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا دا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم Like a person who goes to a club he drinks alcohol when he was walking when he was walking to the was he sinning but now he went into the place he regretted he repented he realized what he was doing is wrong and he got up and he left this is a zawaid now and he got rid of the alcohol that he had in his hand and he walked away from this place then this one does not take the goal of the maqas the maqsad he wants to get rid of the sin now he wants to get away from it this zawaid is now not considered a the ruling of the maqsad because his maqsad originally was what was to come here and to do this the second the third one is zawaid for haram Are you with me brothers? It's a zawaid for a haram which he did not do to get rid of it. For example, if he leaves the club right now, after he finished his drinking, he enjoyed himself, he had fun, and he leaves and he doesn't want to get he doesn't regret what he did. He's leaving now. Is it a does it complete his objective? No, he doesn't. His objective was to do what he did. He already did it. This is Zaida. He doesn't want it. And he's not doing it to get rid of the haram. So at this particular point, he doesn't get rewarded, nor does he get punished, because the Sharia doesn't want him to leave the place, Aslan. He doesn't want him to leave the club and not to be there. Now. The author Rahimahullah Ta'ala he mentions an qaida, another qaida, which is called Isqatul Khata Iwal Ikrah wal Nisyan. Three things is connected to three wordings that the author is using here, which is Al Khata, Al Ikrah, and Nisyan. We have to know the terms that he uses. The word Khata is Wuqu'u shay is something to happen from you. Ala wajhin lam yaqsidhu fa'iluhu, the person did not intend it. That's khata. And nisyan is dhuhulu al-qalb an ma'lumin lahu mutakarrirun fihi. Nisyan means something that was in your heart but it left for now. In other words, you forgot it. It was there already lacking. You forgot it. The third is al-ikrah. It is irghamul abdi ala ma la yurid. It's forcing somebody to do something they do not want. And the word isqad means adamul ta'theem. You're not going to get sin for it. The usage of the word that the shari'ah shari shari used, which is what? Isqad. Again, it's not a khitab shari'i. The shari'ah used other words. It used tajawuz. It used wadah. It also used raf, but the fuqaha used the word isqat, and it's good not to use it. But baman is needed from you. Pay attention to this. Are you there, brothers? If by your forgetfulness something happens to somebody's items, for instance, a brother said, Akhi, can you take my phone, put it in the charger, and also can you warm up that tea for me? And so by accident, you put the mobile phone in the microwave, put it on two hours, <laughs> his, micro, his phone exploded. Are you going to get sin for it? No. But the author, as he said to you, uh, the daman. The sin is not there, Allah is not going to punish you, there's no haram written because you didn't do it. But you have to bring the brother his phone. Are you with me, brothers? Which is that you've now transgressed 
on the brother's product. You need to buy him a phone. It doesn't randomly go nowhere. There's like people use this as an excuse to say, Akhi, it happened. Qadrullah wa ma Like if you go to Egypt and stuff like that and your car gets hit by another person, you. Qadrullah ya akhi. Qadrullah wa ma sha'a fa'al. Nabawlak ya rais. Wallah, nama kuntaks. I didn't intend this and stuff like that. Naam, you. you I, I, naam. Sin is not written on you. And you're not going to be, inshallah ta'ala, not going to get sin for the day of judgment. I want my car fixed. But the man is needed. When we were talking about al-hakam al for the child, what did we say? What is taklif? What is a person mukallaf? When he's what? Aqil and baliq, right? But we said the man is always needed. The child who's ghayru baliq, if he's not baliq, and he runs over somebody, he jumps into your car, he takes the key, he drives, and he hits somebody, and somebody dies from it. No one can kill the child. But blood money is going to have to be paid. Are you with me, brothers? Now. The author now, Rahimahullah, he talks about a qa'ida which is يَثْبُتُ تَبَعًا مَا لَا يَثْبُتُ اسْتِقْلَالًا Istiqlal means something that is what? Infirad, independent. And tabi'iyya is انضمامه إلى غيره when you connect it to something. So there's some things that have a ruling when they stand by themselves. When it's standing by itself, it has a hukum. And it also has another ruling. But then there's another ruling for it when it connects to something. When you do it like this, it becomes permissible. It becomes either permissible, and then when you when it when it connects to something else, it becomes impermissible. Now. The author now goes into the concept of al urf, and we said urf is what. ما تتابع عليه الناس واستقر عندهم, and it is what is known as عاده. Ibn, Ibn Asim in his Murtaqa Al-Wusul would he say Wal-Urfu ma yu'rafu bayna al-nasi Wa mithluhu al-'aada tu duna basi That the Urf is what is known by the people And also is like Aada the same Without any problem And we said that the term that should be used is Urf That's the word that the Sharia used Which is Al-'aada muhakkama That the customs and the norms of the people is muhakkam. It can be judged. Can't go against the people's norms. If there's, if it doesn't oppose the Sharia, as the author said, wal ma'amulun bihi ida warad. The urf is implemented if it comes hukmun min al shari fi lam yuhad. As long as there doesn't come a definition and a restriction from the Sharia, the custom of the people is implemented. There's no problem. We'll do what the people say. We will act according to the people's. So the author here, Ahkam al Shari'a, the jurisprudent rulings, its definitions are not known. Its restriction is not known. Tudbad bil urfi, we can restrict it on based on the urf. Like a qadi can say to a man, you're going to have to give this woman every month 1,500. He can't say, oh, where's your dili? Where's your dili? Is this coming from you? Like the urf and the land of the people when they, this is how much they give their wives. Mathalan. Well, urfu ma'amulun bihi idha warad. Hukmu min al-shari'i sharifi lam yuhad. The sharia hasn't restricted it. The urf is what restricts it. Back home in Somalia though, a thousand more than enough, huh? 800, 500 maybe. So the Sharia is not what's going to restrict it here. The customs of the people is going to restrict it to an amount. So here, yes, yeah, obligatory. The man is going to be a sinner if he doesn't do it. If he doesn't give the woman that amount. Now, 
Because according to the customs, that's what it's done. Naam. The author rahimahullah now goes into another qa'ida which the scholars they say man ista'ajala shay'an qabla awanihi uqiba bihirmanihi which is if somebody hastens a matter before its timing he will be, be, be prevented from it a boy wants to inherit his father he's going to inherit a lot of money from his pups his pups looks, is looking good mashallah he's got a lot of money so what does he do? he adds a little poison into his dad's water and his dad dies it's found that he what? It's found. It's found out, and it's discovered that he did that to his father. So what happens is, is now he's prevented from the inheritance. He can't take his daddy's inheritance. He's going to be punished without being given the inheritance of his father, and he's going to be told, "Nope, you're not allowed to have your dad's inheritance." Even the fuqaha and they take it to another level, which is that if he does see his dad commit zina. Or he, his father kills somebody and he knows that his dad killed him. Can he testify against him? And can he testify against him? Huh? Some of the fuqaha they say that he can he has to testify. That if he knows that his father did do it, but he's not going to inherit him after that. The reason is because that motive can be in his head. And they just, you can't tell which one he's intending now. Does he really want to get rid of his dad to get killed? So because of that, they said, no, it's not allowed. Anyone who hastens a matter before its time, he's going to be prevented from ever receiving it. The word mahdur, what does it mean? It's har it's, it is what has been prevented in sharia in a forceful manner. It is what the Sharia requests from, from you not to do in a forceful manner. It's basically the Muharramat. Mu'aj. Mu'ajilu is mubadaratu ilayhi, is to hasten something, to do it fast. The person is prevented. If the author only just said, Ma'ajilu al matlub li qabla anihi and drop the word mahdhuri it would have been better in the clarification of this qa'idah now this is a now qa'idah which we already spoke about that the muharramat we said that things that are haram when we study in qawaid al fiqiyah it falls into how many we mentioned four Sometimes the haram is connected to something in and within itself. It is connected to the something in and within itself. في نفس العمل in the action itself, or it's connected to the prerequisites, the condition before it, or even the rukun, the pillar. If this tahrim is connected to the action itself, or it's connected to its prerequisite, or even if it's connected to the rukun of it, then this is called fasad and halal, corrupt. And remember, we mentioned it. Four. The first one I said was رُجُعِ إِلَى الْمَنْهِيُ عَنُ فِي ذَاتِ أَوْ رُكْنِهِ The first one is that it's connected to the what? The essence or the pillar. The second one is what? It's connected to its shart. The shart and the rukn, the difference between it is the rukn is فِي مَاهِيَةِ الشَّيْءِ It's in it. Whereas the shart, so the rukn is فِي مَاهِيَةِ الشَّيْءِ Like the Qiraat Surah Al-Fatiha has a rukn and it's in the middle of the prayer. Whereas the shart is kharijun an mahiyat al-shay. It's not, it's not connected to the prayer. It's before the prayer. And it's wudu. But they're both the same. The rukun and the shart are the same. The only difference is one is in the middle of the ibadah and it starts within the ibadah. And the other one is what? Outside the ibadah. Are you with me brothers? Very good. <clears throat> the third one is, it goes back to a wasfun mulazimun lahu. Something that is connected to it, a description that is mulazimullah, it's connected to this action, which can't be detached from it. The fourth one is, it goes to an external point. If it goes back to the first three, this action is now called fasid and butlan, batil, fasid. Like the man who gets married to a woman, bighayri, idni waliyiha, fanikahuha batil, fanikahuha batil, fanikahuha batil. The reason is because the nikah is a what? Sharpun min shurut al-nikah is a condition. 
Are you with me, brothers? So, in atat tahrimu fi nafsi al-amal aw shartihi fadu fasadin wa khalal, fasid, batil. Are you with me, brothers? The difference between fasid, fasad and butlan is, there's a khilaf amongst the scholars, but fasad is used for ibadat. Batil is used for, is used for nikah and stuff like that. Are you with me? Aqdu nikah and contracts and stuff like this called batil. And uh, ibadat is called fasad. Naam. The author, Rahimahullah, now, now goes into something known as Man atlafa shay'an, anyone who destroys something. Daf'an li madarrati, the reason why you destroy this thing is what? It was going to cause you harm, فَلَا ضَمَانَ عَلَيْهِ Then there's nothing you need to pay back. Somebody's horse, somebody's horse started running on you. You got your gun out, you shot it. And this horse was known to kill people, it would eat people. You can shoot it. The horse dies, there's no daman on you. But if you have to use the amount that's needed, are you there? If you can just close your house door, and that's how you can stop it, then that's good. Are you with me? But if you go and you shoot it, knowing that you could have taken another means, then there's the man needed from you. Why are you shooting it? You could have just closed the door. Yeah. A thief comes into your house, breaks into your house, and he's got a little stick. Are you with me? And if you just shout at him, hey, I can see you. Or you get a stick like that and you scare him. And you're three guys. Are you with me, brothers? And then, and he would run away and go outside, then you use that force. But if you get a bazooka and you blow his head off and you say he broke into my house No, no, there's no man on you Because you could have used, that's why the author said You could have taken the minimum, that's what's meant it Are you with me? Or you could have said, hey, I can see you, get out of my house And if you, can, if you know he's going to get scared and run away, then that's it If you know he's not, he's going to try to fight back Then you can just scare him with a stick Are you with me? And if you know that's not going to work, then if you shoot him, then that's it. And he dies from it, then there's nothing upon him. Are you with me? But what the scholars, what you have to understand is, if you kill something, because it's going to cause you harm, we've taken the ruling, right? We've taken it. What about if you kill something because you're hungry? It's a life and death situation. There's a guy's camel in front of me. I'm about to die. I can't see the owner. He's not here. And I'm gonna die. You're allowed to shara and take it. But there's upon you, Baman. You have to pay it back. You have to give it. Are you with me, brothers? And we've exp expanded on this more in our qawaid al fiqih that I taught before. So, two things based on this qa'ida. Two conditions are needed. Are you with me? That this person is He's trying to cause you harm And the reason why you're doing, you're doing this to him Is for to remove him To remove the harm Are you with me brothers? The second is that The type of deflecting and the type of repelling Has to be based on in a correct way, you can't just go overboard. That's when there's no daman on you. That's when there is no daman. Be meaning your itilaf has to be adin al shay, the minimum. The minimum that you need to take. You can't do it with what? Go on board. Hey, yeah? The author, Rahimahullah, he now mentions Qawaid that are connected to Dalalatul al -Fad. And this is 
more appropriate for it to be this in usul al-fiqh than in qawaid al-fiqhiyya. That's why Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasr said these qawaid fiqhiyya works are not just qawaid fiqhiyya, they are also more qawaid usuliyya as well. He's bringing in things that are qawaid usuliyya. These four lines of poetry, the author Rahimahullah he mentions six alfaz that show generalization. And we we took what Am meant. Am we said is what? Al Qawlu al Mawdu al Istiraqi Jami Afradi Bila Hasrin, right? It's a speech that was placed by the Arabs, they're the ones who placed it. Listiraqi Jami Afradi, so it encompasses all of its sub branches that come under it, Bila Hasrin without any exclusivity. And the first one from the six is Al, that enters a Mufrad and a Jama'ah. The word Al. So Sidi Rahimullah is different from who? Abi Ma'ali Jwain in Warakat. He said Lam. And we said this is two codes of that which one shows the generalization? Does the Al show the generalization? Or just does the Lam by itself show the generalization? And this is according to two of the, the, two of the Madaib. Sidi takes the view that it's the Al. So it's the Al that enters the Mufrad and the Jama'a. But remember, the Al that the Al enters into a jinz, an essence. That's when it shows generalization. So the jinz that he enters that is mufrad, the, the, the thing that he enters as a mufrad has to be a jinz. And the jama'ah that he enters also has to be a jinz. Like for example, human is an essence, it's something. So it becomes in al insana lafi khusr. It shows generalization. The author gave example as what? Al Alim. And the author here means the name of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He could mean one of two. He could mean Allah's name or he could mean other than Allah's name. But the author here means Allah's name. Because that's generally how he uses it. Um, also the second thing that he mentions which is النَّكِرَاتُ فِي سِيَاقِ nafi, Which is the indefinite in the context of negation. And the third which is the indefinite in the context of a prohibition. And the fourth one is man. And the fifth one is ma. And the sixth one which is a mufrad mudaf, which is a singular that is attributed. وَإِن تَعُدُّوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ نعمة. نعمة is single, right? Are you with me brothers? Ni'mah is single, right? If you count Allah's blessings in English we say, we make it plural. Ni'ma is it, is it single? It's single. But who did you attribute it to? Ni'mata? Allah. So it becomes generalization. It means all of Allah's blessings if you count it. But in ta'uddu ni'mata Allah, la tuqsuha. You're never able to count it and never be able to. That's the sixth. Those are the six that the author mentioned here, rahimahullah. The mufrad which is mudaf, which is the last one he mentioned, the sixth one. There's two conditions, then it only becomes mudaf. First one is an yakun ism jinsin. It has to be attributed to a name, an na an ism. Ism jinsin, the name of a jins, an essence. And it also has to be mudafun ila ma'rifat in something that's known. If you attribute it to something that's not known, it doesn't show generalization. Now. ولا يتم الحكم حتى تجتمع كل الشروط والموارد مرتفع ومن اتى بما عليه The author رحمه الله he says ولا يتم الحكم حتى تجتمع كل الشروط والموانع ترتفع Here the author is talking about قاعدة which the ulama say أن الأحكام إذا the أحكام لا تتم ولا يترتب عليها مقتضاها والحكم المعلق بها حتى تتم شروطها وتنتفي موانعها If you want to place takfir on somebody the conditions have to be there and the موانع have to be missing or this hukum that you're trying to place on this person is going to be dismissed. Does that make sense? Everything has a shurut. Those conditions have to be there. Mawani' pre preventing factors. They also have to be absent. When the shart and the mawani' are absent, 
this ruling is now placed on this person. It's placed on this person. For instance, the mawani' before placing takfir on somebody is jahl. And jahl is not unrestricted. La ilaha illallah Muhammad rasulullah Anyone who goes against that, هل يعذر بالجهل? لا يعذر بالجهل. بالتفصيل لكن بالتفصيل the scholars expand on that. But he's not. Be careful. The second one is 